Hi pilots and co-pilots, Brian here. Today we're in the Flight Factor 767. We're at KJFK, John F. Kennedy International in New York. We're going to be programming up a flight to Heathrow in London in the UK, EGLL. It's going to be a daytime flight. Our set-off time is going to hopefully be around 8 a.m. It'll probably be around 7 to 8 p.m. depending on winds that we'll be arriving in the UK so we'll have an evening time flight probably over Ireland as we're heading in and then it'll probably be a night landing into Heathrow so we're going to jump into the plane and get programmed up and get going this is my first transatlantic flight so I hope it works don't worry this won't be a full six and a half seven hour video I'm going to do highlights from the flight I um, will probably uh, Finish it up just as we're heading through Canada, probably out over like New oh, well, Newfoundland, somewhere like that. And then I will pick it up again when we hit Ireland. So let's get going. Right, so the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to look at the upper panel, which, uh, like the 737, has all the different areas already laid out and similar areas. But it's a little different, so I'm not working from 100% from the checklist today, but I'm going to see if I can get us going. So first thing is battery and standby power. Actually, the second thing I'm going to do, come down here. We have some work to do on here. Um, but so let's see what I've got to do here. I'm going to bring in um, all the toys, uh, gate config. I'll bring in the fuel truck. Yep. We'll have everything okay and i have to set my uh, flight information here so the first thing i'm going to do is bring up the uh, flight details so our details today are takeoff weight fuel we're going to need eighty three thousand uh, one hundred and twenty one pounds of fuel so if i scroll down here i'm going to go and find uh, passengers, 258 passengers, 28 on the cargo. And we'll get that put in and see if we get a similar uh, fuel weight to what they're estimating here. So that's 258, 28 cargo, 258, 28, and 83,000. Okay. So let's adjust this to 258. That's two eight zero zero zero. And this was let's call this a eighty one thousand. Let's call it two hundred. Let's round up slightly. Okay. I'm gonna get them to optimize center of gravity for me. Okay, it's twenty. Alright, I'm gonna to go to the air part air aircraft. I'm going to open the doors and open the back doors. Uh, go back here and just do maintenance and I'm going to start them loading and oh, that seems very quiet today maybe you can hear it okay hope so anyway that's all loading I can close this down for a minute and I can get back to this so we have a power on there I'll put external power on right now Okay, next thing to do is set my IRS's aligning. That will take a little while. Set the your dampers on. Hydro pumps. Okay, I'm hoping that I'm going to need to turn my emergency lights on there. Actually, what I should do is press that there. That's our little red beacon light thing on the top okay click on my bus tie-ins there we go now we've got some life utility bus and we'll set that up for when we start the engines that won't be yet i'm not going to start the apu just yet um i will start the fuel pumps up we can see the fuel quantity coming on board. We have fuel temperature and it's loading both into the side tanks right now. I imagine we'll have to have a small amount in the center tank. But that's always the last to be filled. I'm going to put my smoking and seatbelt lights on right now. Landing altitude, not too sure. Probably about uh, 80. 
he throws pretty much a sea level but we will check that later Oop, no it's not look blue uh, say 80 for now okay I'm gonna set my cabin ready for the packs to be on and this one to auto as well switch those to auto okay and I'm going to set them ready for later as well that doesn't matter if we have those on as well for the bleed here we go we have pressure duck pressure now we're good if I do that that will bring both down to 20 let's just do one for now Let's turn that round to auto. I get my window heat set. I'm not sure what the weather's going to be like up there, but that's set. Right. Let's come down here. Uh, there's lots and lots of warning things up there. We don't need to worry about that right now. FMC. Nav data out of date. You bet. I don't have the money to afford to update that. Position in it. Let's clear that out of fact. You know what I'm going to do? Click on that. Look at that. Right in the middle of the screen here. That's easier for me to read. I don't know about you. One of the benefits of the Flight Factor 767 is it has these little pop out things. I can even bring that up on an iPad if I wish. But my iPad doesn't work very well with Wi Fi anymore, so I won't be doing that. Right. I have set the GPS. My reference airport is KJF. Where's my K gone? Oh, there. <laughs> yeah, forget me alphabet for a minute there. Great one, Brian. Gate. Oh, I can't remember. Doesn't matter. Right. I'll enter that again there. That was still in the scratch pad. KJFK EGLL. Our destination. Our flight number. I don't know, British Airways, I think it was, was it 172? I saw one that looked interesting. It was a 747, but I'm doing it with the 767. Right, we'll call that there. Runway. What have we got for runway? We have runway... Four left. No, all right, it doesn't like that. Okay. Zero, four... No. Well, they finished loading already. I'm so behind. Okay. We're going to start putting the, the route in here. So, I just need... Hold on. Bear with me. I have to bring this up, but on a different screen. So, there we are. I can see this now on my second screen, which is smaller. So, they're in KJFK, direct to Merit, direct to HFD, direct to PUT. I see what we've got in the departure information here, if there's SID that matches that. There's Merit 4. Okay, runway, I said 4 left. Merit, and it's going us all the way out to PUT. That sounds good. So we're out as far as PUT, so I'll do my course from PUT. It then says direct to which W I it really is which wow. T C H. Sometimes I wonder what the reasoning is behind creating some of these names. I seem to remember reading that it used to exist over Disney that it, it uh, if you went through the different uh, waypoints, I think it said I tore I tore Puddy Cat, which I think's pretty hilarious. One of them would did anyway somewhere. Or is it around Disney? There was all the Disney ones, but somewhere else there was I Toro Toro Puddy Cat. Which that's quite amusing, but it sounds like they're cracking down on that these days. There's a lot less of them. A L L E X. So again with my videos usually I put in uh, the jump points if you want to jump to the takeoff and I put in another jump point if you want to take to just before landing so feel free to do that if that's what you're here to see if you're here for the whole flight come along for the ride and 
So 353B, this is a long one to program up. I'm used to doing short hops. So this is all a new experience for me, doing this transatlantic thing. Um, to Buddha, B, U. Then we're going to Adara. And we're going to Lekva. L E K V A. Then we're going to Everin. So let's get this E V. This is where we're coming in close now to um, the Irish coast, I would imagine. And the, yeah, and then we switch to U L six zero zero seven, and that's our. There we go via, and then Numpu N U M P O up to Bedeck. Right, let's just see what we've got here for EGLL arrivals. So what did I say we're coming in? Oc 2 f Okay. Right, there's a star for that. So we'll go back to the route. Okay. Next page, next page, next page. So we're at Numpo. I'm going to go up to, what are you up to? Up to a deck, B, E, D, E. Okay, I wonder if actually that's the transition for Oc 2 f We'll find out, it might double up. Let's try this. Let's find Oc 2 f Oc 2 f I want an ILS approach, now that GPS rubbish. I'm a big plane. I want an ILS on 27 right right now based on the weather. ILS, 27 right. Ooh. BN big. Is that big and hell? Is that's gonna bring us in the south of Heathrow and wind us all around the big city? I'm gonna see what that one does. Active transition none. There's nothing we can do about that. So that's the route. Let's go and look at our legs. Ah, vectors. Let's get rid of vectors. Invalid delete. I bet if I go. Why is that an invalid delete? What if I put that in the scratch pad? No, I can't do anything. Oh, activate. Okay. Activate. Zack. Okay, I'm going to look at my legs. Now I'm going to try and delete that one. Okay, yeah. Discontinuity, join that up. Exec. Okay, let's go find some more discontinuities. Is that good so far? No, uh, there's one. Zack. Next page. Ooh, the dreaded vectors. Oh, that's after our landing. That's if you take off. Yep, fair enough. ATC would vector you out. Right. So, interestingly, I think this might work. Okay, what we got going on here? This is taking us a little while to get ready to go. Um, let's zoom out a bit. Let's switch that around to plan. And I'm going to step through the steps. Yep, we're curving round down. Numpo. Okay, and we're coming into London. And then chaos, by the look of it. Oh, I see. It's bringing us in south. Then we actually go above the airport. That'd be kind of cool. 
and up to BNN. Is that like Biggin Hill or something? I don't know where that would be. Let's zoom in. And then down, round and in. That's not offensive. I think if I'd done the big one, that would have me swinging all left and right and round trying to get into this. This looks doable. So I'm going to keep stepping through and just make sure it makes sense to me. Maybe zoom in a bit here. Bit of a kink round there. We can do that. BNN, 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 round, round. I like that one. We're going to do that. I'm very happy with that. So let's take that back off plan. Zoom out a little bit there. Right, let's see what we've got to do now. Okay, I'm going to put that on ready. Sorry this is taking a while, but first time I've done this for a transatlantic flight, and I haven't flown this very often before anyway. We are look. We have the wrong fuel quantity here. That is not enough to fly all the way there. What happened there? 81,000 pounds. Now let's try that again. We'll just let them be loading up. And that's all right. So everything else I think is pretty much set. I'm going to start my APU. I have a dickens of job doing this. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I'll turn it back to on. Fault. It's not a fault. Grr. Well, let's just see if it starts up in a little bit. Fingers crossed. Okay. Then we can take away all our ground equipment. We can close the doors. We can call the uh, tug to push us out. And we can get the engine started. And we can get off up into the air. Easy, huh? Right, we have more fuel coming in now. For some reason, they just didn't load us up with the whole lot. Good job I checked. Oh, me. We just have started flying without that, and we would not have got anywhere. Let's have a look from outside for a minute, shall we? So there's our fuel truck and all our ground power units. Uh, we've still got the door open, but the jetway is not connected. That's not great, is it? I hope nobody falls out. I probably can't close that up yet. Yeah, you know, we've still got fuel coming up. Once we've got the fuel on, then we'll do the rest of our uh, FMC calculations, which won't take long, and then we'll be ready to get going. That's going to take another minute or two for the fuel to go on board. So this is KJFK Scenery. I downloaded off explain.org. I can't give credit to who it is that did it, because I cannot remember at this moment. It kind of looks all right. It's, I don't know what the real JFK looks like. I've never been there. Feels a little bit barren, but it's still pretty good. It's good to have a nice airport to fly out of. The weather's actually looking pretty good today. We obviously have light cloud. In fact, that's something I guess I could do would be to um, find the weather in... Uh, what would the weather would be? Uh -huh, I can't get to my weather right now in sky vector but you know i'm going to take that as being okay more importantly it's going to be what it's going to be like at our destination we shall have a look actually let's uh let's drag this over here and you get to see this look at this right what have we got here see see what a flight level we're flying at pretty low actually 33,000 and eventually a step up to 35. Our average winds, they got 58 knots up there, so hopefully 262 is that. That's going to be a tailwind, so that's good. That will help us, but we are not far off the maximum. This is going to be a heavy takeoff. 
so yeah we're doing 33,000 initial okay we can do that we can do that and do we reckon they finished loading yet almost there there we're done so what I'm going to do now is close all the doors I am going to get rid of no I'm not going to do that yet I'm learning. All right, let's put the APU gen on. The APU gen is definitely on. I turn off external power. Now I can disconnect all my toys. I don't need the great fuel truck. I don't need gate config. Okay, so we're on APU power. That's all connected, that's on. Right, okay, good, we're on internal power right now. Again, I'm gonna click on this and bring it up because it's easier for all of us to read. Right, our reserves are one, I think. Cruise is going to be 330. And I think I saw our cost index was 25. Flaps 5 for takeoff. Uh, our CG I think is 20. I might be wrong on how whether I take that one. Trim is five, going to be 5.1. Okay, it's reference speeds. That's a fast takeoff. So, rotate at 156. And V2 is set at 163 and complete. Got it in back to index. So, yeah, 156 rotate complete. Right, so I think we're ready on that. I am going to actually just. Uh, as 163 is set on there, I'm going to set both of my light directors on ready and arm my auto throttle ready for when we actually do that. I might even switch on my LNAV and VNAV as well. Ready. I'm going to set my auto brake to RTO for rejected takeoff. Should that happen? It won't, of course. We have faith in this lovely old plane um, what's the next thing I gotta do I know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna call this up go to ground call for pushback now I'm gonna cheat and look on the outside because this is the pushback track that's included with the plane you can of course I think request the built-in one in X plane 11 but I'm doing this one because it's a bit weird and wonderful. You actually control it with your own throttle and then steer with your rudder pedals and you can steer your own plane. So here we go. Now while I'm doing that, I'm going to bring up my map and work out where I'm supposed to be going from. Runway 4 left. So I've got to come out here, down to the end here and take off in that direction. Okay. Back we go. I'm not going to start the engines up just yet. I can't do two things at once. So I only bring in my left rudder there to start swinging us round. And you'll notice the tug is doing some pretty weird sliding. Not the most correctly modelled and processed effect but it's good enough so there's a few aircraft up there getting ready to take off so let's just bring this up again ok I can go I gotta work out where I'm going in a minute Okay, so I'm going to be going 
going to work out where I'm going. We're going out there, across there, and then I need to go left, and then right down this big runway here. Okay. Or I need to go up there, left. I see. We were going like across there and then down there. Is that where we're going from? Yes. Don't mind me. Just keeping myself amused here, talking to myself, which is technically all I am doing, because there's nobody here with me, so... Let's put my... I don't know. Taxi lights and runway lights, they all kind of look good. Okay, we have the APU running. I'm going to turn my packs off. That should now give me my duct speed I need to get the engines running. I shall turn my... I have my... I used to start twos today. I don't want to wear them out, so round to ground. We should now, hopefully, hear the rumble of the left engine starting. We're going to watch our N2 speed here. Once that gets to about 25, we shall throw in fuel. Watching the exhaust gas temperature, EGT, that it doesn't get too hot. If we don't get enough air going through then they burn hot and that can actually damage the engine so you want to make sure there's enough rotation and movement of air through the engine okay there we go suddenly it roars into life exhaust gas temperature goes right up a little bit into there we go now the volume of air coming through that's flickering was of course the generator attached to the engine kicking in so we now actually have the generator on one of the engines kicked in which is good and I'm now going to turn that around to Compt I'm now going to turn this one round to ground and watch the same for the right engine and nothing's happening Interesting. Let's try that. Nope. Apparently that's not working. Let's try that off and on. You never guess I work in IT, right? What you do is you turn it off and then back on again. Whoa, look at that plane going out. X747 climbing out from a completely different runway to the one I've been determined to fly from for some reason all right let's try this maybe I'm just being an idiot there let's try this again here we go how can you spin up an engine if you don't get any pressure going to it to spin it up there okay so maybe I should have checked ATIS and see what uh, what runways they're flying in and out of because that doesn't agree with what uh, Simbrief has given me for today's flight. Or we can just fly out and say to hell with it. There we go. Fuel going in. Watch your exhaust gas temperature that it doesn't go to the red. Gets hot. And then the air throughput brings it back down under control. Okay, packs back on for now. Okay, because we have both generators running, I'm going to turn the... APU off. Our engines are alive. You have to turn that light on as well. You now I'm going to turn everything on. I'm going to make it look pretty. Put the logo on. Away we go. What, what's it complaining about? Aft cabin temp, flight deck temp, recirc fan, recirc fans. Did I miss them? Yes. Now what's it complaining? Oh, whoa. 
Okay. I missed the electric pumps. Now, in theory, they should go. I'm happy ish. Okay. Give us a bit of throttle and get us going. Apparently. Well, have we still got that stupid thing? Um. Do I have to do that? And is it going to go away now? Oh, yeah, that stupid tug was still there. Okay. I'll give him a minute to clear. Now, apparently, everybody's taking off off this runway. Should we do that? Maybe I should. Oh, that's the runway we probably need to take off from. Moving. We are moving. So I've got keeping this map up just for now so I can try and get my head around where I am. Try and keep over because we are a big old plane. And we go. Try not to spin the engines up too much there. It does seem everybody's kind of taking off on this runway here. So if we're going down there and they're taking off that, so that's 30. We could try that. Technically not what Simbrief is doing, and technically not. Should we do that? Why not? It's actually pretty easy to get to, isn't it? Because I just have to go down the end and then swing back on myself. That's what we're going to do. I'm also going to set my flaps. I'm going to just check them. Unlike the 737, there's not a zero, there's not a one, two, and five. There's just a, a is it a two or a one and, and five? So you don't you don't do three clicks. You do two clicks. I have no idea what. What runway heading we should probably set? 310. I'm not going to worry about it. Okay. As much as I kind of enjoy this flight factor 767, and yes, it's exceedingly detailed, it feels a bit sterile compared to the, the Zebo 737 with the Audio Bird XP sound pack. I mean, this thing, yes, it has PA announcements. You can set them from the tablet down here. But I kind of like the built-inness of the other one where as you flick switches you can kind of imagine that that triggers your co-pilot to say something or it can triggers the flight attendant to say something it's not necessarily you having to f fake it right where am i going oh wow so is that where i'm going i'm trying to work out it is that's a tight corner But we made it. We have not collided with anything. Yeah, we've made definitely made the right choice to follow other aircraft because otherwise we'd be flying with a terrible crosswind on our takeoff. All right. Put our landing lights on. Now, I know there is AI aircraft running today. I've decided to try that. Let's just hope they don't collide with me because I haven't got ATC to give me clearance to enter. There's no way I'm using default ATC in X-Plane. What kind of crazy fool do you think I am? Right, let's swing around. Well, we've got no excuses now. This is it, next stop London. 
Goodbye. New York. Okay. Whew. Deep breath. Can do this. I will probably put my weather radar on. Yep. And I shall turn. Actually, I'm going to. Yep. Turn that on. Okay. I've probably forgotten a lot of things. Wow. Look at that. I've probably forgotten a lot of things, but you know what? Let's bring our engines throttles up a bit. Check that they're balanced. And if they're balanced, then I'll hit Toga. Yep, they're balanced. Okay, Toga. Okay, we're not going anywhere right now. Come on. Right. So 156 was our V... Right. So our rotate speed is 156. 80 knots. We're going to continue. Everything looks good. I'm keeping a bit of... Full oh, it didn't set my trim. Oh, dear. Okay, doesn't matter. We're going to be alright. I didn't set the trim, everybody. Right, 140, 150, right. Okay, and rotate. I think the back wheels came off before the front there. That was a bit bizarre. We are dropping a bit there. Let's climb. We're not going to stall. Okay, gear up because positive rate of climb. Okay. I'm not sure what the radar is seeing. I believe that that's heavy storms. Maybe it's terrain. And we're off. Gone a bit uh, dark in here. Okay. That's good. I'm not even sure what's going on there. What have I selected on here? I'm just going to turn that off because that's just ridiculous. It says it's heavy storms. Okay, it looks a bit odd. Around we go to get on course. Let's have a look on here. Transition speed will be at 10,000. My transition altitude is at 18. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's how we do that in the world of pretend planes. Actually, that's probably not how we do it at all, but that's how I do it. Let's turn these off. I should have turned these off before we took off. Okay. I don't think I'll bother uh, switching to center tanks at all in this flight. Okay, actually, I was a bad boy. I left my packs on for takeoff. I shouldn't have done that. I'll leave my landing lights on for now. And we're good. Oof. Okay, that montage was tiring. For you, that was a great easy takeoff, and this is just a few seconds later. For me, about 25 minutes has passed because I had to keep rewinding that and revideoing uh, the takeoff from all the different angles to just put that little montage together. So, um, I have no idea what's going on right now. I've got to get back into it. Okay, we're climbing out. Flaps are now up. Now, I'm going to adjust our altitude. 
up to 33 so we don't get stopped at 10. We have no ATC telling us what to do. So I don't want to leave that stuck on there or VNAV will disengage and we'll level out. Let's go and have a look outside and see where we are, shall we? So, somewhere over, I think. Is that New York? Uh, I guess. I don't have any good scenery for New York. I know there's a payware one, but who has that kind of money, eh? Not when you've bought a uh, Flight Factor 767 that you haven't used enough yet. I can't justify buying that one. But anyway, we're, we're heading up. I'm going to turn all these stupid lights off in a minute. I've got the fin lights and wing lights and all that kind of stuff. Wow, I've never really looked at the New York area. It's not kind of how I picture it in my mind. It's quite different, isn't it? So New York, that's yeah, Manhattan there. JFK's out here. You kind of got the water is distant. Yeah. Interesting. And we're climbing. And we'll ha I'll have a look at the... Uh, we are levelling out a bit now. Why are we doing that? Oh, if we reached altitude before a waypoint, let's go have a look. Nope, it's just slowing our climb rate slightly. That's fine. That's fine. So here we are, I'm just checking on the map as to... Yeah, so there was Manhattan. And we took off from JFK there. Let's zoom out a bit. So here's Long Island, so we're kind of kind of cut inside, I think, and head up. And interestingly, up here, so East Hampton, Hampton Base. Is this where in films where they've got rich people and they say they're going to the Hamptons? Is is that where they're going? I guess. What else we got here? Nantucket. New Shoreham. I bet that looks a bit different to Shoreham in Britain. Martha's Vineyard, I can see up there. Oh, wow. That's where that is. See? It's a geography lesson. Okay, we're going to come across Boston. Probably. And then we'll be tracking this, and we're going to be flying out across there. I'm going to leave this mapping tool running. So when we get more towards the UK, we'll be able to look back and see our curve across the Atlantic. Which, of course is a straight line if you're flying if you stretch that over a uh, a globe that's a straight line that's the most efficient route but when you uncurve that map and lay it down flat it looks like a curved flight so let's get back into the aircraft here too much time looking at maps but in the clouds you know what I'm quite like in version 4.6 of um, Skymax Pro I really hated version 3, but I'd spent my money on that, so when X Enviro came out, I didn't buy that. Then they came out with version 4, and of course, I bought that because it was cheaper than buying X Enviro, and then they gave some upgrades, and that's... Uh, you know what? Maybe X Enviro's given them a kick in the pants. It's not too bad. I don't have their real weather connector. I use the NOAA plug-in, so we do get jumps when you go from one weather area to another. Boom, it jumps, but... As for effects, ah, I'm happy. Right, so what have we got up here in the way of lights? That can go off, that can go off, that can go off, that can go off, and that can go off, and that can go off, I think. I think I only need these two on the left. That's my position, or maybe I need that one as well. I certainly don't need the wing lights. Pumps are running, engines are on. I'm going to turn my seatbelt sign off and let people around the cabin. That does not need to be on, even though the APU's powered off. Uh, fuel is good. I'll check the FMC in a minute and see if it's happy that I've got enough fuel to make the flight. I'm hoping for some tailwinds to make this a little faster. So let's have another look out the window. What's our altitude? We are at 18,000 feet and climbing. Okay. 
Well, seeing as I hadn't set my altimeters to anything but 2992, I don't have to do anything there. We are fairly rocketing up into the sky. This beast is fast. That's quite pretty, isn't it? Hello Canada, here we come. Probably going to cut across to uh, across Boston and then out towards St. John's. Oh, I don't know. We'll see where the flight takes us, shall we? Okay, everything on the FMC looks good. So we're heading towards America, HFD and Put. By the time we're at Put, we'll be and it's flight level 37, is that the suggested? I wonder what it's going to say is the optimal 32, maximum 37, and we're going for 33, so we're not wasting too much fuel going too high too soon. That's why we do the steps later on, we can get up there easier. At least we've got enough fuel. I did try this the other day and immediately it started complaining to me that there was not going to be enough fuel to complete the flight. So we've got a turn coming up soon. So 18 nautical miles from Merritt. We're up to 22,000 feet. This is easy, isn't it? VNAV, LNAV, auto throttles on. The RTO switched back to off automatically. Oh, our landing gear is up. Now it's locked off. That's it. It's off. I can probably turn off the flood right now. It's not doing anything for me. I could put the weather on, but I'm not sure what it's going to tell me. I could put the weather on, but I can't seem to do that. Let's click it again. Maybe I could put it on to uh, detect turbulence, so I'm not sure if that functionality even works. Wow. We've got some severe buffeting right now. Let's actually adjust. Oops, sorry, people. Let's adjust this to detect turbulence and see if that does anything for me. Let's have a look from outside. We seem to be. We've got some wing flexing going on. Yeah, a bit of shimmying going on there. I think that's the technical term. We are climbing. You want to see on the map where we are? Are we near Boston? Okay, we're getting there. So it's ahead. So I think we will be going in roughly over Boston. If we oh zoom in. This is a bit delayed, so we're probably up around here somewhere. I'm gonna go and have a look outside. Of course there's those darn clouds getting in the way. But I can just see some of the ground between the clouds. Not to say that isn't actually pretty damn realistic. It's, that's cool. So we've made our turn, as you saw from the outside there. We won't be too long before we're at uh, top of climb there. We're at 28,000 feet. 
and we'll be flying over Boston very soon. But of course, these darn clouds are getting in the way and I can't see very well. Uh, I'll stop the video for a minute or two and if I can get a good view of Boston as I'm climbing, I will show you that. Then we'll be into Canada and I will keep a track on this and uh, I think at that point you can join me again on the Irish coast. Ooh, the clouds are just merging in a bit there. That's better than it used to be for when it changes. It's not quite as abrupt as it used to be. There appear to be lots of planes in the sky. I have left the AI running, for better or worse. Which, of course, means when we land in London, there'll be a lot of um, North American liveried 737s coming into land. So that'd be bizarre. It'll be dark, so you won't see it. So it won't look too stupid. Yeah, so the clouds have cleared a little there. I don't have the cloud radius distance that's too huge right now. Uh, but I guess there's Boston, somewhere around there in the middle. So I will uh, might uh, start the video again when I get closer. But other than that, you are going to see me. You're going to see me just off the coast of beautiful Ireland. As we uh, probably will be evening time by the time we get there. And... Uh, we shall film the descent and approach into Heathrow. So, for you it'll be a few minutes, well, maybe a minute at most. For me, we're talking another six hours, at least six and a half hours. So, uh, I shall see you there. Welcome back. You join me just as we're approaching uh, the coast of Ireland, and I was going to tell you how beautiful and easy this flight was going to be for the part two. However you join me, we have developed some severe engine issues on engine on the left engine, engine number one, and I've had to shut this engine down. I am just going to work out what I can do. I think I'm going to have to reduce our altitude early, because we will not probably be able to maintain this. What's our current airspeed? So we are going flat out currently on engine number two. We had an engine overheat on engine number one. There was a fuel config issue, which I could not understand. So I made the decision based on the strange activity of engine number one to shut it down. So we've just completed that. You did miss that, unfortunately. Fly first, video later. I'm not going to declare an emergency at this stage. We can fly on one engine. Oh, in up. I guess that's not an option for me. Um, we've got plenty of fuel left. Right now we do seem to be okay. We are losing a bit of speed. Um, how far do we still have to go? We have a fair distance. Well, what's our EGLL our estimated time is 20 to 8. So we still have an hour's flight. And I'm probably not going to maintain this altitude for long. Yeah, we're starting to drop off in speed. I'm going to start a very slow descent and use that to see if... I can use that. The engines... Number two engine's pretty much pegged. 98% there. We're going to be okay. But we shall just have to work slightly at uh, bringing us down. Let's have a look at the map, shall we? Well, there we are. We're coming in across the south, real southern tip of Ireland. And if I zoom out, you can see this was our flight. Over there, you can see that curve. That's the curve of the Earth. That's actually a straight line, and then we've adjusted from that, and now we're... So we're going to be cutting in, as we can see here, across the south of Wales, 
down and in fact actually up slightly across the top of London and not quite over London and then round and then hopefully into EGLL that's the plan okay we're still losing speed there and our altitude is now coming down I am actually going to increase that slightly We'll get there. We're just holding steady now. Pretty much. Good. So, what would I need to do? Let's get rid of this. What I need to do, I'd shut the engine down. So, I need to turn that to off. And that's inoperative. I could. Can you start the AP of this higher to provide power? I honestly don't know what the um, proposal for that is, but I guess that is actually an option, isn't it? Because then you could drive battery power, generator power off the APU, and then leave all of the power for engine two for that. I don't know. Anyway, I'm also going to make people go sit down because we technically do have a bit of an issue. You know what? I'm not got a lot going on right now. I am going to. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, we are experiencing some technical difficulties. It is possible that the captain will decide to land in the alternative airport. Please remain calm. Take your seats and fasten your seat belts. Thank you. Hmm. So. Left engine bleed off. Yeah, okay, well, I could turn that off. Left engine bleed off. Well. Turn that generator off. And we'll see how we do. I think we're going to be all right. Oh, I just flicked something there. I didn't mean to. What did I flick? Anyway, looks like our engine, our EGT on engine number two, that is fine. In flight start. Do you reckon I could try a restart? Let's see. So obviously, I mean, I, I would admit I was away from my PC for a while like six hours because I needed to go to sleep so this is the next day so for some of this flight the engine has obviously developed an issue on engine number one I wonder what's wrong with it can we find that out I wonder if our little panel no faults or malfunctions are detected well damn okay we try for a restart okay so put your hydro pumps back on we won't worry about the generator um, yeah 
if I turn that to do I turn that to like continuous and that's trimming it off we've got fuel I'm just uh, I'm just thinking right now okay it's going at 31 let's throw some fuel in this again it's getting hot but it's dropping Okay, now if I put speed back on, there's still something a bit wrong with my engine here, look. Look, what's it doing there? What's that? Disasters at 33,000 feet. Emergency. Whoa, whoa, look at this. The heck? A fuel problem. It's like a fuel delivery problem. We, we sure this says there's no problems. Okay, that's not good, is it? There's some weird stuff going on there. Um, Engine one is toast, everybody. Um, okay. So what happens if I do cross feet there? Okay, I turn that off. Just balance up both wings a bit here. Hmm. Okay, let's have a look outside and enjoy the beautiful scenery while I figure this out. Or, or not, that actually looks a bit hideous, doesn't it? There's some strange lighting effect there. That'll be fixed on my next video, I think. Okay, we're out over the sea, heading towards Wales. It's 
so I'm not sure where Top of Descent is, but... Uh, we're sneaking down slowly, although we seem to be doing a fairly well at keeping our speed up right now. Quite happy with that. So uh, I'm going to keep flying, and uh, you'll just, when you tune in, I'll be a little bit closer. So there you go. That wasn't long, was it? But it, for me, it's been about 15 minutes. I'm now over Wales. Just at the edge of Wales, actually. Just over, I think, Milford Haven. Uh, my altitude is down to 29,000 feet. I've got it set for 1900. I'm very slowly descending right now. We're keeping a good speed up, but also at the same time, a slight descent is what we need to to get there. And there's a problem loading some scenery. That is a shame. Um, so we're eating up the distance until we really start reducing an altitude, which will reduce the stress on the aircraft. It's definitely night time now, heading on. Uh, so we're coming in for a nighttime flight, so I'll tune in again soon and we'll be even closer. As we can see, the right engine is pegged, but okay. Our uh, altitude is creeping down. Um, our speed isn't what it could be, but you know what? The plane's doing a very good job at actually uh, keeping up there. So I'm just going to keep an eye on this, and I'm sure we'll be just fine. Uh, trying to figure out how to use the cross feeds to pump some fuel across from left to right because obviously now we've got the left hand side of the plane is going to be much heavier with fuel I'll figure that out and uh, you'll join in with me again in a few minutes so we're getting closer now you can see land well, you can't see a lot right now, but uh, we got land below us there, so we're going through Wales right now. It's probably a Swansea or Cardiff, is it? Uh, we've left this Cardiff coming up. We're actually probably about here, so Cardiff and Newport there. But we're pretty dark in the skies right now. I have, since I joined you last, I have started up my APU, and I have my APU generator running, and... Uh, yeah, I'm also using the duct pressure from that as well. So that's there to support the uh, the aircraft and maybe reduce some of the demand on the right engine. Also, should the right engine fail, at least we have the APU running to power the hydraulics and the other bits and pieces or allow us to try a restart. All those kind of horrible, scary, but fun things too. Now, we're coming to Numpo. Okay, so at this stage we're still slightly below the altitude and dropping, but uh, after we switch to o Okizi, then we're going to be dropping down to flight level uh, 190. I'm actually going to put us back onto VNAV and see if it can handle it, because the speed's going to be dropping soon as well. And I think with the one, the one engine on this 767 we should be able to handle it, so we'll be okay. Do you notice how I keep saying that? Like self-assurance that, yeah, it's going to be fine. Nothing coming back on the weather radar, so that's a good sign. I will certainly be putting all my lights on from 10,000 feet to make sure everybody can see me. So how far have we got to go? Not far. We're going to turn slightly in just a minute. Do that from the outside, I want to see it. So there we go, I think that's Cardiff below me that. I don't know if you can even see that on the recording. You see some flashing lights, can't you? But it's dark old skies tonight. Can you see me in the cockpit? There we go. Ooh. Well, there's a bit of little last remnants of evening. Well, that's pretty cool. I like that. 
You, ah, you can actually see it. I, and I don't like the way they do the cloud on that. You know, the uh, engine exhaust on this and the vapor trail, the contrail. But at least it is actually only coming from the one engine. We do only have... You can see that that engine's running and you can see that engine certainly isn't. That's kind of cool. So I'm going to put VNAV back on for a minute. Because it's now going to deal with getting us down to flight level 190 and then 1400 and you notice our speed will then we'll have a speed reduction at some stage as well right, obviously we can't make 270 but uh, now 275 it's got us out there We're good. Okay. So I just brought up the map for our instrument approach chart. I think we're going to be doing 27 right. That's what I programmed for. Our transition altitude is 6,000 feet. Um, elevation, yeah, 80. I guessed that right on takeoff. So what's our ATIS? 128.075. So I'm going to put that in there. And, uh, okay, we're going to need 110.3 for our ILS when we get closer. And I'll program that in there. So I need 128.075. Right now I want to find out what runway we're actually using and what the weather conditions are. So one, two, eight point one, two, eight point zero seven five. Let's switch that one over. Ah, come on. We'll just wait for some ATIS information. Obviously, nothing yet. So it's got us, we're supposed to be descending to flight level 190, but it doesn't seem to be actively doing that. And maybe VNAV's not going to work for me, so let's do that. going to say 1900 and we'll start bringing this down and I'll just monitor that and see if that's too aggressive or just about right I'd say that's too aggressive let's bring that up to about 12 maybe our speed should increase a bit that will Certainly make the auto throttle happy. And we should actually be at 275 anyway, so let's bring that down. I doubt we're gonna quite get that fast. In fact, it's a bit ridiculous trying to make it maintain that. Let's bring that to 260. Wow, look at that, the throttle's actually easing off and we've only got one engine running. Awesome. It's still pretty dark out there, because there's no point looking outside. So we're coming in. So I think our, our route today takes us in across here. 
And then, so somewhere around here is Heathrow. So it will swing us across here. We'll actually go across the top of Heathrow. We'll then come around north of London. And then down here. And then, then not too far actually. And then round and back in. So it'll be up and round here. In for a landing there. I'm hoping that we get close enough soon that we can hear Atis. So our speed is at 260 with 65 nautical miles and we do need to let's actually now I'm jumping that all over the place sorry everybody the planes I'm kind of delaying that because we level out later now I know air traffic control would be sending us around but we spend a lot of time at 14,000 feet so it's not as if we're urgently trying to drop so it doesn't matter if we take a bit longer to get there. It means the engine's actually able to fly a little less stressed for a little longer. So how's our fuel situation? Uh, we have a lot more weight on the left. But it's not a ridiculous amount. It's not like 40,000 pounds over here and 6 there. That would be awkward. You know what, I'm going to put the fancy lights on off the side and my logo and let's go and look outside cheer ourselves up there we go look at that, the BA logo there and there's still a little bit of weird bit of glow there I'm not sure what would cause that but like the sun coming up through the planet or something yeah we have some bit, just like floaty lights there oh I see no they're on the they light the tail up and then these ones shine back to light the wings up Where are we on the map? Well, I'm not hearing any Atis. Are you? No. I'm going to bring up the map and see if I can get to Ethro. Altimeter is 3012. Sky's clear. Okay. Uh, winds 230, 33. That's 33 knots. That's really freaking windy. Is that right? Oh my god, that's just what we don't want when we've got an engine out. Well, let's, let's do this. Okay. Oops, sorry. Let's just. Sky clear. Temperature 15, dew point minus 3, altimeter 3012, arriving runway 27 right, departing runway 27 left, advise on initial contact you have delta. Okay, 27 right, I think we're set up for that. Let's go and check our flight plan, because it's been like a day since I set this up. 27 right, okay, we're good. Okay, I'm kind of excited. And turn those stupid wing lights off though, they were really annoying. Um, I won't put landing lights on yet, we're a bit high for that. Let's have a look at our legs here. So we're still pretty high. Okay, I'll keep us descending now. Because we are we have got to get down there, really. We've got to get six thousand foot as you can see. This looks a bit scary. What's going on there? Nope, I can't see. Let's have a look on the map. Where are we? So that's you. Okay. Is that me or is that me? Oh that's me. Okay, so we're coming along this route here. I think we're going to swing around by Ock and up across that way and then round that way. Don't quote me on that. It just looks a bit wrong on this map here, but... Oh, 
Oh, I see. Yep, there's our turn at arc. And we're going to go out that way. Yes. Good. So as you join me again, we're just making our turn here. We're heading towards Ock. Just past Nigget. So we're coming down. I'm heading for 14,000 feet. And I'm actually going to bring my, my speed down to 250. And we'll drift down that. I certainly won't be popping flaps out. I will let the aircraft slow down manually. I'll squeeze every bit of energy out of this aircraft I can without trying to manually slow it down. So we're coming up to the turn at Ock. I'm basically, I'm not using VNAV. I'm actually adjusting my altitude manually and uh, watching because when I tried VNAV it looked like it was just holding us so there's Heathrow I think on the left hand side let's go look outside shall we hello London outskirts of London wow as the lights will turn on I hope they resolve this in a future release of X-Plane really bugs me Wish all the lights would just be on into the distance. Little specks of light. Just like rolling power cuts when you're flying an X-plane. More lights coming on. That's a big busy airport up there. So we've got a turn coming up soon. 5.8 nautical miles, at which we're supposed to be at 14,000. And we pretty much are, actually. Which is cool. We'll level up very soon. We are going slightly fast, but you know what? That's great because as we level up, we're going to lose that speed. Hello, Heathrow. We're going to be landing there very soon. APU appears to be doing its job just fine. Yep, there we go. Throttle's going back up. Let's see if it can ma make it. It's going to have to work hard, of course, because it's just the one engine. 93. Yeah, okay. It's not flat out. Good. We're 1.1, 1 nautical mile. We're going to make a turn. Let's... Do we want to watch it from the outside? It's a bit difficult to see. Okay, you can see the engine heat from the right engine and nothing from the left. That's cool. I guess that's Gatwick down there, actually. They look very close together in this situation. But you try driving between the two, and there's the M25 there. I guess that's the M4 heading towards Wales. M4 motorway, that's the old British joke how do you get two whales in a mini along the M4 yeah it's not that funny is it, never mind ok, don't do jokes on my channel I've learned that now right, we're staying at 14,000 feet right now but once we pass Ock, I can dial in at 9,800 what did I just do Not sure. Oh, we still have six nautical miles to Ock. I was lying. It was the previous waypoint I was reading. We should be coming up to this turn soon. We are pretty much flying parallel with Heathrow. So we are going to be landing there, there soon. there we go, there's our turn over London well, technically that's London over there, but shh, don't tell anyone there we go yep, 
Let's, um, let's tell our passengers something. Okay, so we have 22 nautical miles in which I'm going to lose five, four and a bit thousand feet. So I don't want to be going down too fast, do I? I'm going to need to drop my speed to 240. Less stress on the engine again. So now we can see the part of this route. I'm going to do this big loop round, round to there, and then another, and then round another curve, and then back in towards the runway. You join us again. I'm just making our turn. I'm a little high. Actually, yes, a little fast. I'm going to put a little bit of drag out there to keep me. Legal, keep me below 250 that. I'm just going to adjust my... Actually, you know what? I'm actually going to turn my weather radar off. I do not need it. So there's London before us there. We're just making this curve. You see this? We're curving round. We're still descending. Yeah, we've got to be down at uh, 7,000 feet at 9 nautical miles. And I am going to turn my landing lights on now. Now I can see there's a little bit of cloud out there in front of us. Have a final look outside for now. This plane's doing very well on one engine. So we're slightly above 250 right now. I really don't want to throw the flaps out any more than I have to because all that will happen is then it will crank up the right engine. I don't want to do that right now. It's idling. Okay. Just coming up to altitude now. Let's keep an eye on our legs. I'm actually going to zoom that in a little. So we've got a bit more clarity of what's going on. Actually, I'm even going to go to that one right now. Seven thousand four hundred feet and descending, and at six thousand, we adjust to local. Which I just double check again. I'm not putting ATIS back on. Three zero one two. Well, that that be Q and H. Whatever that would be. I'm actually gonna do this now while I've got a bit of breathing space. Three zero one two. Do we have one on this side to adjust as well? Yes. Okay, we're leveling off there. We're heading towards BNN eleven.
and then we'll be dropping to 6,000 feet. Okay, let's dial up 6,000. down we come I'm trying not I'm not going to use flaps or anything yet I don't I'm going to keep this aircraft as slippery as possible as late as possible at least the weather's nice if it had been raining I think I would have called this flight off ok 2.5 nautical miles and we'll just about be on target as we get there and then the next is going to be a drop to 180 and 4249 I think I might have to fly this approach manually with only one, I don't know, can you do an in well, I'll use the ILS for most of the approach but it certainly won't be an auto land Okay, and we're just switching to the next one. That's 4249. Oop, let's get us down to 4242. And our speed is to come down to 180 now. You put in first degrees of flap, which oh shit, where I'm actually gonna have to. I didn't think I'd have to do this, but I'm gonna have to slow us down. That's close. Okay, now it's bringing us down at speed, so we'll just keep watching this. I'm gonna arm my auto brakes for later. Coming up on our altitude. We go for the next degree of flat. See. We're going to be turning again out across the city. Okay, and it wants us at 3,500 feet. that speed how many degrees of flap are we on five when we come to 15 I can drop the gear I don't want to do that too early Unfortunately, I wasn't watching my speed there. Okay. We need to go down to 3,000 feet now. Oh, jeez. I don't like the way that jumps like that. Okay, I'm going to go 15 degrees of flap now. Gear down. now going to full flaps okay I'm going to switch to approach over speed I know I know Okay. 
I need to look at this. What's our descent? 140. Okay, plus 8. Okay, I'm going to let... I'm not quite there on the ILS, actually. So... Okay. Just dropping us down a bit. On target. Not on the ILS though. Hopefully it'll pick us up in a minute. We are high. Try and get us down here. This is messy and not how pilot would do it, but it's how I do it. We're at full flaps. My gear is down, unlocked. Three greens. Our speed is being controlled on auto throttle on the one engine. Still trying to get us to lose. We're on the glide slope. Okay. Now I can see. Looks like two whites, two reds on the pappies. So we just did a bit of nasty dropping out of the sky there. I have my lights on. There isn't like a prepare for landing or anything like that. That's rubbish, right? Okay. Where are we going? Oh, okay, it's saying land three. Uh... Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, I don't like this. What are you doing? Okay. Okay, there's a tremendous amount of drag on the right-hand side. Are we going to make this over? Shit. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it can't do an auto land with one engine, one ladies and gentlemen. Jesus, okay. You know what? You should call this off and go around. I am not that kind of person. I'm not a quitter. Come on, we can do this. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. God, the passenger's going to be getting sick. Come on. Let's get this back onto the line. Basically, I think the auto land system just couldn't cope. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Couldn't cope with a huge amount of drag on that left engine. I've got quite a lot of rudder on now. Yeah. We're coming back. We're coming back. Over to the center. Come on. I say adjust it round. We're gonna set God, this is yes, minimums. We're gonna land. Screw it. We're gonna land. Brakes armed. Ah, this is still fighting me. 
Wow. And not on the center line. 50. Okay. 40. Yeah. 30. 20. 10. Look at that. Our throttle, I forgot to kill the throttle there, that's right. Well, we are just off to one side. <sighs> Heck, look at that. I didn't quite get it on the wrong way properly. Yuck. Well, we're alive. But that was nasty, wasn't it? Wow. Wow. Whew. But we're down. Whew. Right. It's busy here at Heathrow. I don't know where I'm going. I actually think I'm just going to park it here right now. We'll get the emergency ladders out and get everybody off. And I'm going to go and have a lay down. That was a nightmare. Wow. I'm just going to whack it here. Well, thank you very much for watching. That wasn't quite the first transatlantic flight I was planning. Um, wow. Scary. Yeah, I'm going to have to go and think about that. And I'll try it again next week. So thanks for watching. Subscribe if you like what I do. If you've stuck to the end, well done for you. And I don't blame all those people who didn't. So I'll see you again soon.